when the world around you seems like it's falling apart and evil is running rampant, what do you do? How do you respond to that? That's a question that we're going to look at here as we dive into our series on Habakkuk and these Tuesday morning devotionals. It's where we're going to be for the next couple of months as we work through this little book. And as we start this morning, um, Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, <clears throat> works to deal with how Habakkuk responds when his world is doing just that. You see, Habakkuk ministered. His uh, ministry years were in the some of the final years of the, of the empire in Judah before they were sent into exile by God as a result of their sin. So Habakkuk is living after Israel was sent into exile, but before the nation of Judah was sent into exile. Both nations were punished, were um, disciplined by God in this way because of their sin. But as yet, when Habakkuk was writing, this punishment had not happened. All Habakkuk saw when he looked around him in Judah at that time was justice that was either not going out at all, or when it did go out, it was perverted because the wicked people in the land, he said, encircled the righteous. There was more wicked than righteous. And so they were playing with the, um, the, the justice in the land and the, the poor were being oppressed and there was iniquity and there was sin and just wickedness. And what he saw as he looked around was a people who had been called by God's own name, that being the, the people of Judah, um, Jewish people, God's covenant people, according to Exodus chapter 24. We talked about that in church this last Sunday, that this is when the, the covenant was confirmed. The people of Judah were among them. They were supposed to be people whose lives were marked by following God's law and by being faithful to him and by looking out for, you know, the, the poor in the land was one of the ways that they can do that. But there was a lot of other ways they could do that as well and being faithful to God and worshiping him only, loving him, loving others. The list goes on and they were not doing that. And so as Habakkuk looked around him in Judah, all he saw was people living differently than they were supposed to, and drastically differently, the opposite of how they were supposed to be living, and it, it really burned him. And so how we see the book opening here in Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, is we see Habakkuk recognizing the evil in the world around him and responding in a way that I think we can learn a lot from today as well. He doesn't just get upset about it and start complaining to his neighbors about it. He doesn't try and you know, organize some sort of a, you know, a political rally and try and solve things that way. Rather, he prays. And his prayer is very honest. It's, it's very bold. It may actually make us a little bit uncomfortable when we read it because his prayer really takes the form more of a complaint than anything else. If you look at Ex or, uh, Exodus, if you look at Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, we see Habakkuk asking the Lord why he's not answering. He tells the Lord he's been calling out to him and he's been crying out to him. And he asks the Lord, how long do I have to keep doing this before you'll answer me? Before you'll see what's going on here? Before you'll act in some way um, to help your people, to discipline your people, to stop the injustice that's happening here in and among your people. This is Habakkuk's question of God. How, how long is it going to take before you do something about this? As the book of Habakkuk plays out, we're going to see God let Habakkuk know how he's going to answer that. He's going to let Habakkuk know that he's not sitting idly by, that he's not unaware of the problem, that Habakkuk's prayers of, for, for justice and for God to act have not gone, gone unnoticed. But as God lays out, how he's going to respond and as he peels back the curtain a little bit so that Habakkuk gets a picture of how God is going to deal with this, it's a shock. It's not what Habakkuk was expecting. Maybe Habakkuk was expecting God to step in and, you know, discipline his people somehow or maybe send revival so that people would start caring about his law again, things like that. But the picture that God gives Habakkuk of what's going to happen in the coming years looks very different from that. We're going to get into that. As we work our way through the book of Habakkuk here over the next number of weeks, we're going to see Habakkuk raise a complaint, like what he did here in the first few verses of chapter 1, and that's going to be followed by a response to that complaint by God, which will then be followed by another response from Habakkuk in the form of another complaint towards God, and God will respond to that again. And that brings us then to Habakkuk chapter 3, where we see Habakkuk praising God, worshiping him, and we see a glimmer of hope. 
That's one of the things I love about these little minor prophets, these little books right at the end of the Old Testament, is they often deal with some heavy, um, challenging topics as God promises to punish his people for their sin, as he promises to, in some cases, like Habakkuk, send them into exile because of their sin. And, and many people will have suffered and died as a result of that. But we see the glimmer of hope. And we see a call by God to Habakkuk here to trust him. In Habakkuk chapter 2, God tells Habakkuk that the righteous or the just, the ones who follow God, need to live in faith. They need to have faith that God sees what's going on in the world, that he knows what's going on in the world, and that he has a plan to fix what's going on in the world. But maybe that's going to look different than what Habakkuk thought. Well, it will look different than what Habakkuk thought. But maybe it's going to look different than what I think and what you think it's going to look like in the meantime as well. We know that God has a plan and a purpose um, in this world. We, we know, based on scripture, that when the end comes, God does win. And righteousness does prevail. But we don't know all the ins and outs of what that's going to look like in the meantime. The challenge here is, will we do what God calls Habakkuk to do? Will we live by faith? Will we trust God with that? That's a big picture challenge from the whole book of Habakkuk. But for today, the little challenge, it's not little, smaller challenge that I want to lay out to you today is um, back to that question that I started with. When the world is falling apart and evil seems rampant, how do we respond I want to challenge you and encourage you this morning to respond like Habakkuk does and to pray about it. Now, our, our natural human selves might want us to type out an angry rant on Facebook or to, to join this political movement or that rally or, or something like that and think, man, if I just get involved in something like that, that will solve the issue. Now, there may be a time and a place for some of those sorts of things. However, I want to suggest that the best place to start is exactly what Habakkuk does here to pray. To be honest with God, when, when you're bothered by what's going on, talk to God about it. When, when you see injustice happening and it just feels like nothing's being done about it, pray to the God who promises justice and promises to look out for the, the oppressed and different things like that. Bring those things to the Lord and begin there. That's not to say we never do anything else, but the challenge I see in Habakkuk is to start there. Do we understand who actually has the power to change? these sorts of things and who holds eternity and the, and the plan of the world in his hand it's a good plan it's a plan that will take place and in the end we know God will bring Victoria be victorious and we know that there'll be justice that will be served and we know these sorts of things but do we put that into practice in how we respond when it seems like everything is crumbling around us Habakkuk starts with prayer and I think that's a great lesson for you to take today and for me to take today as well I hope you have a great week. I hope you're looking forward to joining us in this series in Habakkuk here over the next number of weeks. And we will talk to you again soon. Have a great day.